see? Could you see that those were babies? Did I know those were human beings? Absolutely. I didn't care. I did not care. These are the people the media will never show you because it would affect the narrative around the issue of abortion. The people that have multiple abortion and regret it. The Bible says in Exodus 20 chapter 13, you shall not murder. And abortion is murder. It is denying a person right to live. And if you're pro-abortion and you're watching this video and you don't, you don't want to hear the other side, just click, just you don't watch this video. But if you're a person who wants to see the other side, how other people feel about abortion, watch this video. Take a look. All right, well, thank you all so much for being here. Everyone here has a different story. Patricia, Gigi, Emily, you having experienced having had abortions, and Dr. Levitino, Dr. Robinson, and Dr. Altman having performed abortions in the past. So I'd like to start with each person sharing their involvement with abortion briefly, um, maybe how many abortions performed or had, and the kinds and the, and the time frame. I got pregnant at 17 and had an abortion using um, are you 486 drugs? And then seven months later, I got pregnant again and had another abortion using are you 486 drugs? Yes, I had multiple abortions, five. Um, I did the surgical abortion um, with the suctioning um, during first trimester. And I had the also the medical, the abortion pill. I also had multiple abortions. I had three at the age of 19, and they were all surgical. And then I worked as an employee behind the doors of Planned Parenthood. What kind of abortions were you involved with as an employee at Planned Parenthood? So it was a DNC and the dismemberment also, um, up to 20 weeks was involved. Dr. Altman. And I was on the other side. Um, I probably did um, 500 abortions. 500 abortion. 500 abortion. In other words, she killed 500 human beings. Can you imagine that? If you're a person who perform abortion and afterward you regret it, how can you live with yourself knowing you killed 500 people that could have been on this earth having beautiful lives? Man, this is terrible. Let's continue with the video. And I also had an abortion, which is why I think I was so gung-ho, so pro-abortion when I started my residency because I had my own abortion uh, just prior to entering medical school because I thought if I was pregnant, I wouldn't be able to become a doctor. What kind of abortion did you have, Dr. Altman? DNC with suction. Can you just explain? And I don't know if you guys could see, you could see the, you could hear the hurt in her voice. So you know this person really regret what she did to those kids, to those babies. Explain briefly what a D&E abortion is. So a D&E, or as it's also called and, and is more descriptive, a, a dismemberment abortion, um, during that usually you have to dilate the cervix ahead of time, usually the day before, with some laminaria, something that will expand the cervix. And then you go in with a suction tube to remove the fluid and bring the baby down lower into the uterine cavity so that you can then reach in with a forceps and um, with the clamp and you just try to grab whatever you can grab and pull and twist and it the cervix is um, smaller than the baby so the the baby will be held back and you, as you pull you can pull off an arm or a leg and once you've gotten all the arms and legs, then you try to go back. And I always tried to get the head next because if you got the thorax and pelvis and just left the head, you have this little round ball that's trying to get away from you. So I would try to get the head. And as Dr. Levitino has described in the past, you know when you've gotten the head because the white brains leak out and then you know you've, you've gotten it. And then you just try to make sure you get the placenta and uh, put all the body parts together. Now, I never did what they do at Planned Parenthood. I never sent that tissue to someone else to look at. I always stopped what I was doing, looked right then because I needed to immediately know before I let that patient out of the stirrups that everything was complete or she could come back with an infection or die. 
So then I would just um, check to make sure that the all of the um, the walls of the uterus seemed to be a little scratchy and it didn't have anything else. You know, I would put the section back in and make sure she wasn't bleeding too much and then I'd let her go to recovery. I was involved in abortion in my training as a resident, also moonlighting or sideline hustle in Southern California. Uh, so I performed several hundred abortions all in the first trimester, the, the DNC suction type of abortions. But during my training, I did witness uh, saline abortions. Uh, I did see very mature, you know, second, third trimester babies, which now we see in the, in the NICU and lots of hospitals that, uh, that I have witnessed. So hundreds of abortions over several years. I learned to do first and second trimester abortions, including suction DNCs and saline abortions during my residency program. Um, after I got into private practice over the next four and a half years, I performed almost 1,200 first and second trimester abortions, including suction DNCs and suction DNE abortions. What does it feel like to talk to a former for those who've experienced abortion, had abortions, and you yourself too, Dr. Allman, but um, what, is, what has it felt like to talk to former abortionists? I never thought this day would come. Um, I kind of compartmentalized or pushed the doctors, the staff to the back of my mind. And so I um, intentionally tried to forget everything that would happen behind those doors. And so this is um, really informative and it is, it is a bit of a shock that, you know, this wasn't just a quick experience or quick, uh, quick fix is what they like to call it, but this was an entire process of murder. For me, it's very healing. I went through a process of healing, just like Gigi mentioned. Um, not only did I have to forgive my partner, it was pretty passive during one of my abortions, but I had to forgive all who failed, right? Society with their lies, the educators came in my school when I was a little girl, and also the abortionists that I felt lied to me, like they failed me, like you failed me, right? And so now that I'm publicly speaking, you know, as a former worker, I know the courage that it takes. You know, and I, and I know that you're doing reparation for what was done. And I just, I just wanna thank you for your courage. How do you feel the abortionists failed you? Because I worked behind the doors of Planned Parenthood. And when I started to work there, they trained me to change my vocabulary, right? So, you know, they told me never use the word baby on abortion days, yeah. fetus, mother, father. You tell the women it's a sack of tissue. You never let them see the ultrasound. But I was the one that had to look for the body parts. I didn't know when I assisted the first abortion that I had to look for body parts. I seriously, with my whole heart, thought I was gonna look for a sack of tissue because that's what I was told before my three abortions. But to my shock and my surprise, it was, there, there were babies, right? And I remember back in the days, uh, I used to date a girl who had an abortion and uh, she felt really guilty about it, just like the woman you see in this video. And she would always have a Bible open in her room. And I guess, you know, she felt, you know, she felt guilty and she wanted to be closer to God. And she wanted God to know that, you know, she's sorry about what she did. And every time she was taught, she, every time she talked about it, you could see, you could hear the hurt in her voice. So if you're a person who's trying to have an abortion and you're feeling guilty, you're feeling something inside of you, that should tell you, hey, what I'm about, what I'm about to do is evil. What I'm about to do is wrong. Let's continue with the video. And so immediately I thought they lied to me. They failed me, you know? They convinced me to kill my children when they told me they were sacks of tissues and clump of cells. They denied me the right to see the ultrasound. And so I had to heal from that. I feel similar. There was a time in my life when I was very, very angry with abortionists, specifically the abortionists that gave me the pills for both of my abortions. I 
was angry because I felt that he understood the development of my baby and I, my babies, and I did not. And I felt like I had been deceived in a sense because I wasn't given the full story, the full truth. And getting to sit here and hear your stories and see the redemption in you guys is just incredible. And I'm very, very thankful for that. And it's, it's so healing for both sides to be able to, to find forgiveness and truth. And I'm just so thankful for the work that you guys are doing. And I love you guys. Um, I have a confession to make to you guys, um, just in proxy of the abortion doctors that I encountered and staff. But every time I would go, I would lie on the paperwork. I would lie about how many previous abortions I had because I was ashamed for the staff to know. Um, even though it was your job, it was your, this is where these things happen. This is where, you know, killing innocent babies happen. I somehow felt shame and didn't want you to know that I had previous abortions. And so I would lie on the paperwork to the point where even today I have to work my mind to even figure out the numbers and to figure out the dates and to like, I've, I suppress so much of that memory. And so it leads to my question, did you know if women lied? Could you tell if she had multiple abortions? How often did women come in with multiple abortions? Um, you know, was there red flags? Was there, yeah, just the, the, the numbers, the stats on what you saw in those? <laughs> you know, a liar is a murderer. Uh, when we talk about abortion stats, the reality of it, I know in our facility or the facilities I've worked in, you'd make up numbers. I mean, who's really, really counting and who's going to check? you know about how many you've done. It's, oh, well, this month we did so many. It, it's depersonalized. And if you're killing babies, I'm lying about how many you do. That's, that's nothing, right? As I've gone through this process of sitting with former colleagues and that, where we kill children and facing off with your faces, the faces of women who we took their babies away and the babies whose faces that we never see just brings forth the reality of the, the depravity of men and what and, and women and what we're capable of. <clears throat> and when you put a face on it, it makes it real. And my thoughts are brought to are brought to a particular abortion I was involved in with my late wife, Dr. Johnson. He performed an abortion on her sister. Mm -hmm. We killed our niece or nephew. Mm -hmm. Each one of these abortions has a vast consequence. My niece or, or nephew would have been in their, in their 40s right now. My sister-in-law had one child at the time. That child was killed in a boating accident we killed, which would have been her only surviving child. And that sister-in-law is childless now because of the abortion we performed on her. That should tell you a little bit about the capability and, and the depravity that we have within us that we know it's spiritual, but yeah, I take responsibility for that to be in that room and assist in the killing of a personal relative. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a wake up call that we are fighting uh, an intense battle against a formidable enemy, uh, but we still have to take personal responsibility at the same time. When I returned to do abortions after my baby was born, I did abortions throughout my pregnancy and with no regrets. But when I went back after my baby was born, I ran into three patients who changed my mind and I could no longer kill babies just because they weren't wanted. The first one was a woman, a girl, who I had personally done three abortions on. 
she was using abortionist birth control. And I went to the clinic manager and I said, I don't want to do this abortion. She said, three, I've done them. And she said, well, that's her right. You have no say so. You need to do that abortion. I said, well, that's easy for you to say. You're not doing the killing. I don't think I ever judged any of my patients prior to that. But at that point, I thought, no, this is, this is, this is wrong. And thankfully for that girl, that was the beginning of the end for me. So I was thankful that, you know, well, she couldn't have lied because she was in our records and I knew I had done them. But somehow for me knowing that I had done three abortions on one woman, one girl, young girl, um, was unsettling. I have a question that I've always wondered. When I had to look for the body parts, the five pieces of the baby, the first time I knew that was a human being. Like, the scales fell off my eyes, and I was literally in shock. And the abortionist came in to make sure that everything was in the Petri dish, right? This big dish that we had. And he was whistling, and I remember him saying to everybody, what are we all gonna have for lunch? When before this abortion, he told me to tell the young woman it was not a baby, it was a sack of tissue. And I remember screaming inside of myself, how can he not see what I'm seeing? Mm. And my question is, did you, could you see? Could you see that those were babies? I can answer that for myself. I cannot speak for any other abortionist in the world. Did I know those were human beings? Absolutely. I didn't care. I did not care. For me, and I don't know the mechanism, I don't know the mental mechanism taking place, but for me, I guess I knew they were human, but it was very schizophrenic. But my, my interest um, was extremely scientific. Um, I didn't see the difference between them and a chick embryo, you know, or a frog that we dissected. Um, I, I thought they were beautiful. I, again, I don't know how this is possible, but I had the same reaction as Abby Johnson that when I looked, I thought, oh, look at the little toes and look at the little fingers. They're so amazing. But somehow I didn't see them as little people, you know, that were worth caring, caring about. You know, if the, if the mom wanted her baby and she was miscarrying, I was distraught with her. But if, if she didn't want her baby, then I was willing to dispose of that, of that child, of that baby. And it wasn't until I read an article comparing abortion to the Holocaust that I suddenly realized that I could do these terrible things because I didn't consider them human beings. I didn't see them as human. And, and you know, I guess more like animals. Although I can't imagine myself being willing to pull off the arms and legs of a little kitten. You know, I probably would have had more sympathy for them. But somehow there's this darkness that clouds your, clouds your mind and you can do things that you would never think possible. You know, I thought I was a good person. I, I also, I, I have to apologize, I, I really thought I was helping women and had no idea the trauma, you know, and the scarring that I left in my, in my wake. All the girls that I did abortions on were young girls, you know, college students, probably some high school students, all for normal pregnancies. None of them were for maternal indications or fetal indications. They were all just normal babies. And I do worry about what happened to those women later because I know for me, it was very traumatic once I realized what I had done, once I'd had a baby, how traumatic it was for me. And, and, and again, I also went through a post-abortal syndrome. Thankfully, I had people around who um, could give me the counseling and the healing that I needed to heal. And I also have to admit, unlike you, you felt more guilty 
because of your involvement in other people's abortions, I felt more guilty that I could actually kill my own child as opposed to killing other people's children. Not that either is less, but I had more trouble forgiving myself for killing my own child. Here's another reason abortion is wrong. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So God know each and every one of us before we were born. For you to stop that process, that's you telling God he is wrong. He is wrong for creating you. He is wrong for giving you life. A lot of people are fighting, a lot of women and men uh, are fighting for women's right in America. In other words, they are fighting for their right to kill their unborn child. After watching this video, if you think abortion is a woman's right, if you think it is okay for a woman to kill her unborn baby, then I don't know what to tell you. Then God help you. <sighs> this is a video for you guys. Please like it and share it. And I'll see you on the next video. God bless you.